Hey, man, the first thing I got to say is, man, it's a, it really is a pleasure to speak to you guys. I've been a big fan for a long time, man. 1987 was the first time I heard you, and I've been a fan ever since. Thanks, man. Where, where are you at right now? Pittsburgh. Okay. Cool town. Yeah, I didn't get a chance to see you guys the last time through. You guys played out of Jurgles. Jurgles? Yeah, that's... A lot of people didn't get a chance to last time. Yeah, it's crazy. I know. I know. I was. I don't know what happened. I don't know. I, I, it might have been a promoter deal. I don't know. We uh, we hadn't played there in a long time. I remember the time we played, we played there before that. We we had a really good night. Uh, we played there a few times, and it's always been a good turnout. But last time we played, it was uh, it was uh, kind of a less than par turnout. I would guess you would say. It seems to be like that in this town. I mean, these guys don't. They don't do a lot. Yeah, the huge club, just not not ready for prime time. That's that's really about it too. They they try to bring in a lot of bands. They have uh, they have Winger coming in. They have uh, Night Rangers coming in at the end of the month. And you know, it's that's just the way this town is, man. They don't seem to promote a lot, especially in the hard rock. I mean, it's. If it's like country or uh, you know rap or anything like that, which is that's just the way it is. It's un unfortunate though. It definitely is unfortunate. They're all about it, then, huh? Yeah, I get it. I don't know, right? <laughs> that's, that's the way it is. Hey, hey, guys. Like I said, I I've been a fan since '87, uh, and I was always curious about how uh, how did the band form? I mean, how did you guys uh, get together and uh, and get started? Yeah, sure. We're changing locations, dude. Okay, go ahead, guys. I got you. Okay. Dean brought me into his car, which is like a hot box of a cigar. Like a cigar. Shut up, dude. <laughs> this is a hothead. <laughs> so I had to live with your freaking thing, you know. So lighten up, dude. <laughs> to bring you to the small thing. Wait, wait, wait. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Can we roll down a window or something? You can do whatever you yeah. want, dude. Let's just have a better speaker thing, and then yeah. and the garage gets freaking bacon. Okay. Yeah. All right, John, we're back. <laughs> All right, guys. You know, it's it's definitely it's better to do interviews in a car too, man. I do I do a lot of them in there because I could hear better. I don't get the feedback or any of the other crap that's out there. Well, we're on tour right now. We just started in the garage. We made it to the car. Then we're gonna hit the gas station. <laughs> we got we got our, our biggest stop today is Taco Bell. Hey, that's cool, man. Hey, that's a premiere. I'm gonna have to get that out there. First tour, first date of the tour. Totally. So yeah. Hey, when uh, uh, like I said, when you guys when you guys uh started out, I mean, how how was the band formed? I mean, how did you guys decide to get together and and get started? It started out. Uh, Dean Dean was in a, a separate band with with uh, Carrie, and I went to high school with Jeff, and um, Jeff was playing with these guys, and I was in a guitar class with them in high school. With, like back when we were 17, 18 years old, and uh, then we just kind of, kind of like shifted gears and melted things, and we were a cover band for a long time. We just played backyard parties, a whole bunch of who's ever house we could thrash at the time. Right. In Huntington Beach, in, uh, in in Southern California, back in the day, there was just it was it was a house party situation. That's how bands got. How, that's how they played. Got exposure, and just uh, you played in somebody's living room. <laughs> or backyard. It's just, we probably played 100, 200 backyard parties before we even played a club. That's kind of where it started. Just playing, uh, what, Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, Scorpions, Tigers of Pantang, uh, you know, Budgie, all that stuff. All kinds of old stuff. I think that's when we were in our prime. Yeah. And then, yeah. uh, and then we got a gig opening up for Accept. We opened up for Accept. 
accept at this place called the, the Concert Factory. But they wanted an all original set. We couldn't play as a cover band. So uh, the singer at the time, I don't remember who it was, Wendell, he, we, he was just only singing the cover tunes. We didn't have any originals worked out with him. So our first gig was an all instrumental gig. Right. Yeah, oh, that's we cool. Even, like, we didn't have a singer for our first club gig at the cop at the at the Dallas factory. Wow. And actually, uh, Gary from uh, <laughs> uh Von Hair dude. Oh yeah. He came and sang a couple tunes. Yeah. And uh, I think we snuck in a couple covers. As a matter of fact, I do that's remember cool. playing a couple covers. We played um, we played uh, what's that song by Triumph? Da 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 and um, and then we had other singers. We had another gig, and our singer didn't show up. How many singers did we have? Like nine. <laughs> <laughs> and our singer didn't show up. About, I was always the guy at rehearsal, just singing through the rehearsal just to get us through rehearsal. Right. One time our singer didn't show up for a backyard party, and all of a sudden they were like, "Did you sing tonight?" I'm like, yeah. I'm not. <laughs> it, was like, it was like that picture in the bullpen going, dude, you're starting tonight. Go, you're like, I'm not pitching. <laughs> yeah, going cold. <laughs> yeah. No, so uh, but Jeff, Jeff and, uh, and Wendell, no, Wendell, yeah, no, Wendell didn't make it. So Jeff went to the store and got me a bottle of Lord Calvert whiskey. And I was like, Lord Calvert. <laughs> that was like 18 or 19 years old at the time. <laughs> And all of a sudden, I was like, I can do it. I can I do know it. I how it is. It's here. <laughs> I know how it is. There, man. You should watch me. You were singing everything by that time. Work. Dude, I was singing freaking show tunes by the end of that night. <laughs> <laughs> and then all, and then for then on, they're like, yeah, I was a singer. We never went back. I don't know how or why you guys chose me. I was pretty, I don't even know if it was my, I don't know. I was just a drummer, man. He didn't really have to say so back then. I had no say. <laughs> you I just say. Even have to say so. uh, I was along for the ride, man. You guys decide. I'll go either way. Dean, Dean, like, it's a, this is like a Monopoly game, John. <laughs> like, you know, like, at the beginning of the game, everybody's got all the same amount of deeds and money. That's it. <laughs> By the end of the game, Dean bought everybody's folded mortgage, turned over park places. That's <laughs> I just it. picked up all the abandoned pieces. <laughs> That happens. Uh, now and uh, here we are today. Dean, uh, Dean's the smartest man standing. He uh, he got the trademark. We uh, you know we got the uh, we hold the cards and anything right. that happens, Blood Wolf in the future is kind of ours to. Uh, it's really funny that me and Mikey are the leader, and we get to do whatever we want, and we don't. We can just do whatever we want. That's just kind of cool. That is cool. You know what? You can always have done whatever you want, but you just had to go through five other guys to, which means you can't, to get it. <laughs> right, exactly. It's not metal! That's not metal! You were always, uh, <laughs> you want to take democracy, but, um, no, it was never democracy. We, we, always, had, we always voted on it. Hey, Dean, they, Dean, they always blame the drummer, yeah. don't they? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They what? I said they always blame the drummer, don't they? No. I haven't got blame for it. Well, I don't know. I don't think so. The only thing I'm going to blame <laughs> for is these blind green shorts. He's going, what the fuck? I didn't work out there. I'll be like, this one is like, like so distracting. I was like, I want to have a green screen. Hey, we normally like to wear black, but Dean's a swimmer. Dean is a, uh, an aquamatic man, I guess you would say. Aquaman. <laughs> you know, I'll tell you, John, I'll tell you a quick story. Back in the day when we were yeah, yeah. Dean were roommates in the Bahamas. We recorded our records in Nassau, in the Bahamas. Okay. And one time, me and Dean are sitting on the roof partaking in illegal activities. <laughs> the good activities. And, um, whoa, whoa, dude, whoa. Sparking a fatty, I guess you would say, on the rooftop of a, of a of our condo that overlooks the ocean for miles with the sun setting, and it's about 6.30, 7 o'clock at night. Okay. And farther than, the eye, uh, farther than the eye can see out into the ocean, Dean goes, dude, there's a guy out there and he's waving his arms around. I think he's drowning. And I go, I don't know what you're seeing, dude, but I don't see any guy out there waving his arms and drowning. He goes, no, dude, there's a guy out there drowning. Well, Dean's always been a water polo swimmer dude, like champion guy. Okay. So he jumps in the ocean <laughs> and swims probably, I'm thinking in my mind, 400 yards. 
No, it was about a mile. It was a mile. Okay. okay. It's about, about 1,500 yards. It was about 1,500 yards. He swam <laughs> down there so far out into the ocean. Caught this guy by the throat and brought him back into the ocean. This guy was like, what, a 60, 70-year-old man? He was, in a, he was in a little rap. He was in a little rap fishing for his village. For oh, months. man. And then one... He was the grandpa of the village. He had so many kids and grandchildren. He was the king of the village. He was king of the village. Well, Dean <laughs> saved the king of the lives. <laughs> so Dean brings this guy back to his village. And it turns out, Dean turns out to be the hero of this village. So Dean gets free lobster dinner for the rest of the time <laughs> in this village. On this point, with people banging on drums and singing songs. Just living like <laughs> yeah. In poverty. Just the happiest people in poverty. You know, just like living in grass stacks with dirt on the floor, and Dean brings the king back of the king's life. This is a true story. It was, yeah, well, well, That's what's awesome. What's really funny to me is, is I, I swam out there, and the guy's sitting on the boat, and he's, he's like, hey, and, and I look at him, he's and blue. He, no, he's got, a, he's got some vodka, and he's drinking <laughs> straight vodka. I'm going, I'm going, what's going on? He goes, I lost my paddle, man. I lost my paddle. I go, well, what's your plan, dude? He goes, I'm not sure, man. I can't swim. <laughs> so, so I, I grab this freaking string, I just hold it back in, I'm talking to the dude, and then I get back to the shore, and uh, tons of people were there, man. Robert, Robert Palmer was there. Oh, yeah, Robert Palmer. And Robert Palmer. Oh, you know man. Told, dude, you should never do that. There's sharks out there. <laughs> told, you know, you, you're lucky they didn't meet you. <laughs> Robert Palmer's great. But we, had to, we were recording in Compass Point Studios, and he had the studio next door. Yeah. And so, like, at 6 o'clock at, six o'clock at night, we'd go to dinner, we'd have dinner break, and Robert Palmer would come in, and he'd have his suit and tie, smelling like the best cologne you could probably buy on the island. Right. Just, like, super slicked out. And he'd come in, he'd do his tracks, and then by, like, 6 o'clock in the morning, 7 o'clock in the morning, he'd come out, and the studio door would open, and it just smelled like some chemicals were just on fire. <laughs> <laughs> I think he is from New York. Yeah, but. yeah, I'm not positive though. Hey, you know, after he came, after he came out of there, he didn't even know who he, where he was from. That was anybody's guess. That's it. <laughs> he had this, he had this really killer house on the beach though. Um, yeah, it was right there, and it was like it was the it was the mansion on the water for sure. He was living the dream back in the day. Oh yeah, he was. I mean, he had he had what two huge hits right back to back. Yeah, that was that time, eighty eight, eighty nine. Yeah. Right. The power station thing happened, and that whole thing. Right. Yeah. That was a time when you, when. Uh, you know, all the, all the Island sent all their artists out there to, to make records, and they sent us out there because they made so much money off everybody else. They had to figure out a way to lose money. So they said, hey. <laughs> We got these idiots from Huntington Beach, California that would love to go and spend two hundred fifty thousand dollars making a record. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's, let's get a real speedwagon producer to do it. <laughs> Don't tell them they can make that same record for fifteen grand in LA. Yeah, tell them that. Tell them, that. <laughs> tell them what they want to hear. Huh? Right. Hey, we didn't care. That was a good time, though. It was fun. You know what, though, you guys. You, a lot of bands, and and you guys are one of the ones that that, that stood out at that time, man. Because I, I thought you were awesome coming out in you know, a three in three guitar attack, and and uh, nobody was doing that. I mean, nobody ever did that. It was the first time, you know, that I remember hearing it. And the, the songs were tight, and the and the uh, you know you guys had the big hooks, and the band was, I mean, just the you guys were awesome. I mean, that's that's the truth. Well, we worked hard. We had we had. Uh... We had like the mandatory six night a week jam rehearsals. Like if you weren't there, it was like, where are you? Right. <laughs> like, oh, no, no, no. It's my mom's birthday. We'll get the fuck over here. That's it. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> it was like, you know, seriously, if you weren't there, it's like, what the hell's wrong with you? So now we worked really hard. Me, us three sat on the couch, 
Jeff's couch for hours and hours just working out that whole thing. You just can't, you know, we've learned even over the years trying to replace the guys. You just can't throw three guys, three guitar players in a room and say, yeah, it's going to work. There has to be a certain amount of chemistry and understanding that goes into that. You just, you, just, you know, right. commitment. Commitment, right. yeah. You, right. you can't. On paper, yeah, three guys on paper could totally work, but it's, it's way but even if you get two guitar players in the same room, then you're already you're already talking about two because the guitar play takes up so much room, you know. So when when you have three guitar players, it's more of an everybody has to understand that it's an ensemble, right? You know, it's it's, it's a parts based thing, and you have your part, and that's what you play. And it's not a lot of room for, um, or if any room for ad living or free for all, you know. Right. Unless you're solo, but usually the solos are worked out and, and well thought out where it works out. So it's definitely not a uh, jam band or free for all, you know. It's a, right. It's a work shit out, come to the table, rehearse, and you got some parts to play. So, the, yeah, with three guitar players, that makes it even more. Uh, or, or I should say, less room for improvisation. You just have to really, it's an ensemble, like I said. It's just, everybody has to have their stuff together and know exactly what they're playing because not a lot of room for mistakes or improvisation. Now, how did you, when you guys, when you guys started, you know, with the, how, how did you guys decide to go with the three guitars? Was it just something that just came up, or, or was it just something that was, uh, you know, was it planned out, or was it just, hey, you know, get We were just going to be three guitars. It was Jeff's idea, pretty much. It's not do the triple harmony thing. Well, I, I, Jeff being in the middle of, Je of Carrie and me, because Jeff knew Carrie and Jeff knew me. Right. And Jeff was playing with you guys, and but Jeff was also jamming with me. We were already writing songs. And, and to be honest, when we first started, we, it was all, you know, Judas Priest and Iron Maiden and Scorpions covers and all that kind of thing. And right. a lot of those parts already had that overdub three guitar part right so we were just calling all the parts really and you know uh we took it a, a bit farther when we started writing our own stuff and we we tried to be more polyphonic as opposed to just you know playing one three and five harmonies you know triads on on notes we tried to do right. three different parts that all made sense together that had a, a cohesive balance and you know uh, orchestration where it was just not more than just a guitar part. It was it was a worked out kind of a thing where the guitars actually took front seat over what the vocals and the choruses were doing. Not not until we really got Kevin Beamish involved to, did we really start thinking about like poppy choruses and that you know no, I wouldn't say poppy. I just mean more catchy and right. you know, harmonies and big vocals and that sort of thing. Now, how was it when you guys? You know, when you're playing live, you know, with three like that, I mean, is it is it any different? I mean, is it different than, like, say, when you're in a studio? Totally different. It's completely different. Because now you're dealing with elements of sound, your tone, your amp placement, monitors, how loud that guy is, how loud you are. There's, there's you know, yeah, obviously there's a lot more elements that go into effect right. to fuck things up. Tricky business. Definitely tricky business, and you know, it's a uh, if you can't hear yourself, you, you it's a whole different world. <laughs> you're rely, you're like a blind guitar player relying on braille, right? <laughs> or you're like Helen Keller, right? Feeling for everything. Man. Keller. <laughs> Record, Helen Keller. He also. Directional. He's got a depth that was blind. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, you you guys always, uh, you know, to me offered like uh, the best of both worlds. I mean, you had the power metal side, the melodic, you know, hard rock side, and everything, and you appeal to a, a wide array of uh, of rock fans, you know. How would you guys describe the the Leather Wolf style? I mean, what 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 is the best thing to say that says hey this is kind of what we are you guys are you guys are, are really different than uh than most just metal bands in general i think it's because we we set out with lack of direction 
I do. I, I, yeah. think, I swear to God, I don't think we we, uh, we did set out and go, this is what we're going to be. You know, we had, we had a big array of stuff we played, and uh, we kind of, at, at the time, we weren't afraid to, you know, try other avenues. We definitely did what we want. We did what we want. And we weren't really concerned about radio or, or any of that stuff, at least the first two records. Right. We, we, never, we never, like, think, oh, we got to have a hit, so let's write Share a Dream. That wasn't it. It was just like... We, we all had songs, we had different uh, influences, and we were all free to bring those to the table. And that's how we got such a wide variety. I mean, that's how you got, like, Black Knight and Lonely Road on the same record. Like, what the hell? Right, right. <laughs> you know, like, two totally different spectrums of the song. We had, you know, hindsight, we would have been like, hey, let's maybe we focus on a direction here, guys. But we didn't really have that mindset. We were just like, hey, man, we're just, we're just doing our thing, you know? You know? Was it, was it a good decision? Probably not, because, you know, we're obviously not selling selling out arenas or large venues this time. But, we have day jobs. You know. <laughs> but we just did what we, we stayed true to ourselves. I'll give us that. We didn't ever right. sell out or try to be something we weren't. See, and there were so many bands that did that, too. I mean, it, you know, especially like when, uh, when grunge hit, you know, a lot of the I'm not saying a lot of them, but there were a lot of them, you know, a decent amount that, that went out and, and tried to do that style and, you know, get that in there. But, you know, like, I, I, I always thought it was uh, it was good that bands, you know, like you guys, you know, for example, like you said, you you didn't you didn't sell out, you didn't, you were true to yourselves. And I think that's why that, you know, that that era of music has so much staying power as opposed to, you know, a lot of them out there. I mean, you, there's bands that come and go you know, night and day, but that era seems that, you know, the bands are still together, you know, there's different players in there, obviously, but still, I mean, for the, the you know, the core is still there. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's tough to get all the original guys 30 years later, and everybody being healthy and aware and right. capable and want to. There's a lot of factors that come into play 20, 30 years later, so, you know, you know, would it be cool to have all the original dudes playing and doing our thing? And keep it? yeah, it would be. But right now, it, 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 it's it's super cool. We got a really cool band, and me and Dean are like holding the torch and rocking it on, and uh, doing some very cool things and playing some cool shows. Yeah, so like to try to get you know original band of all the same guys together thirty years later. That's a, that's a pretty tall order. Hats off to the guys that do it. Right. And you get you get uh you know very few bands like like you were just saying right there you know like Iron Maiden and, and even bringing up Iron Maiden with the with the triple guitar attack man they you get Iron Maiden following you guys that's pretty cool. Yeah, well, I don't know. Just look at what they fly, dude. Right, right. What does that mean? Just look at what they play. What they play. Nothing like uh, the bleeds that you guys play or the. Okay. You know, like, uh, we met with Bruce Dickinson probably about 10, 15, how many years ago? Oh, dude, that was 20 years ago? Yeah, 2003, probably. Yeah, so that was... Uh, he wanted to uh, work with us on a Sanctuary label. He yeah. was really intrigued with the, with the three guitar thing we were doing. And lo and behold, six months later or so, all of a sudden, Iron Maiden had three guitar players. So we're like, uh, right, uh, right. So, yeah. Um... And when that when that came down, that's the first thing I thought of too. I was like, man, it, you know, they obviously got that off a of, off a of leather wolf. That's a, that's a given. I don't know. Well, what came from Leather Skinner did it. Chicken or the egg? <laughs> leather Skinner did it, right? Yeah. And so did uh, April Wine. They, yeah, they were good. Yeah, but uh, that's true. That's true. It's a chicken. It's a chicken or the egg thing because we wouldn't have doing three guitars unless there was Iron Man and Judas Priest because we were just copying them in the first Yeah, yeah, yeah. And right. And then they went, holy shit, we don't want three guitar players. Let's do that. Yeah. <laughs> so like, wait, hold on a second. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> we got this like a wall moment. Whoa. Everything comes full circle, that's all. So are we the chicken on the egg? I don't know, dude. <laughs> I don't remember. I don't, I, I don't I thought that. I thought after Bruce is when they got the third guitar player. Yeah, way after Bruce. They've done several albums before they got to the guitar. Yeah. Right, right. But I think we, we were, I think we were before them. 
I think Janet just came along for the eye candy. <laughs> He had a deal that he, he would join if he didn't get kicked out because he was doing something else. He was allowed 7.5 poses per song. <laughs> and I figured after the first seven songs, he's up to your quota. That's it. And in his contract, he bumped that up to 10 poses per song. So Yeah, that's it. Pretty well for himself right now. <laughs> You're not going to print it on Burning Iron Maiden on this. That's it. That's it. And anything that that uh that is going. That's it. That's part of that appeal. Oh yeah. Hey, when, when you guys uh, you you guys uh, I like the you know the style that you write into. I mean, like I said, it's it, it's different. It's it's uh, it, it's memorable. Like you, you were just talking about, you know, the the choruses and everything, and you guys, you know, threw that in. You know, a, a little bit later, you know, you started to to build off of that. When when you guys when you write songs, I mean, what what element do you look for to build the song around? I mean, is it a is it the chorus now, or is it you know a guitar a guitar track? You know, how do you guys go about writing? It's, I don't know. It's got to be some hook somewhere. It's got either a, a starts with a vocal hook or a guitar line or a hook. Something's got to hook you into writing a song. So either or it's either you're driving down the street and you get a cool little chorus thing in your head and you write some music around it or you pick up your guitar and a cool riff falls into your hand and something builds around that so I don't know there's no definitely no formula or um, set pattern that it could happen now when I was thinking about you know some of the, the Leather Wolf songs you guys did uh, I think it's one of the Definitely one of my favorite songs of all time. Um, you know, talking to you guys is pretty cool. You know, just discussing this, but uh, when you guys did Alone in the Night from Return of the Living Dead, you know, I, I listen to that song to this day, and it just, I mean, it kicks ass from start to finish. Now, when you guys when you guys did that, how did that project come about? That song was written in like five minutes. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah, it. I thought it was a cool song. Yeah, five minutes. Yeah, we're out. Wow. We're, we're going to release a release a video in a little while with the, of that song, a live video. Oh, that's cool. Now, is that? Do you guys play? Friends actually look dead. Look at the look at the money we're going to save on makeup by waiting three five years. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, just. <laughs> Stay way back there if you're going to get my face. You want to get my drum seat close up, but not 
have too much face. Right. <laughs> well, now they have special makeup that can make you look like Brad Pitt. Good, you know. I would just rather be seen far away. That's the best way to look at Yeah, just let the singer be the man. Or, or somebody else. <laughs> Far away. I'd say that's classic. Classic. Actually, like, I think the actually best way to talk to you actually is on the phone. Why? I don't want to look at you. <laughs> <It's> so fucking <laughs> ugly. Man, see, Jesus. See, like I said, Dean, drum, here, drummers don't get any respect, man. Yeah, see, man. Wow. These neon green shorts. I mean, like, I'm just trying to put the blinders on right now. Dude, this guy, this guy, I just went and swam a, a mile and a half. This guy couldn't even swim fucking a 50. I just, uh, <laughs> he fucking died. <laughs> my hair would drown on me. I don't want to talk about my shorts. <laughs> Let's talk about these shorts. No, I don't okay. want to, you know, I don't want to, I, I, I got into swimming. I remember one time we went to the gym. And I had to put on this shower cap that had so much hair. My yeah. phone was green. You know, like a like a swimmer's cap, and I had so much fucking hair, I looked like Gumby. And it was like, <laughs> like I'm, I'm out here, and I'm not even here fucking water. I remember that. <laughs> yeah, I got, I, I don't like big enough hat. Like big enough hat. You can see these are freaking helmets. <laughs> see now you guys got that in an interview, man. Look out. <laughs> yeah, you guys, uh, you're doing, uh, you got some festivals coming up. Uh, is it, is it, is it starting out in the spring? I know it's in a, in the summer in, in, uh, Europe. Is there anything you want to get out uh, there to the audience? We're, 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 we're looking to get some, uh, some local gigs booked for some warm up shows. We're going out to the UK in August. Okay. Five, five, six shows over there. We're doing, uh, Festival in Hull, England. I forget the name of it. I, uh, what's it? Hair, hair Metal Heaven. Yeah, Hair Metal Heaven. Okay. We're a Hair, a hair Metal Heaven. I'll be playing Jesus. Baby Black Jesus. Little Baby Black Jesus. I like to think of my baby Jesus five, eight point six ounces. There you go. <laughs> Now what what kind of turnouts yeah, what kind of turnouts do they get at those festivals over there? I mean, I know some of them get a you know get a really good turnout over in Europe as opposed to over here. Yeah, I mean, we, we don't have anything. Here. I gotta be honest, man. We have, we haven't played England in since eighty nine ninety, so I don't even know. I, cool. I, I gotta be I gotta be a bit earlier than that. I had no idea what this. So we've been to Germany many times, and since then, Holland, you know, and around Greece, different places, Italy, but. UK, we have not been to UK for quite a while, so I, I'm pretty much in the dark as to what to expect. We think at least four people will show up. <laughs> I, got, I got confirmation. That's it. I got some emails on Facebook. <laughs> well, it'll be nice that it'll be nice for the for you guys to be back in England. I mean, if you haven't been there since you know since the '80s, I mean, man. I'm, I'm taking my family with it. We're doing a, a little trip before we're going to Ireland, tri tripping around a little bit, and uh, cool. make a thing out of it, and then go rock some other old shows around. It's super fun. We've got a new guitar player, Joey Tafoya. Yeah, that's what I was gonna. That's what I was gonna ask you, man. That's a. That's pretty cool, man. Joey's an awesome player. Yeah, Joey's great. We've known him for a long time. Uh, he's an Orange County guy. So our paths have crossed many times over the years. He's always been my, my buddy. I've always ran into him. We've always talked. And then the spot opened up, and we talked to him about it. And he was excited about it and came down to an audition and tore it up. He's a man. He's ready for the gig. So how does he? How, how well does he fit your style? I mean, is he is he fit in a in a band? You know, really tight like you guys want. I mean, I figured he would be. Yeah, I, you know. I think it's, it's a little bit of a, 
be honest, it's a bit of adjustment for Joey because he's he's usually a single player or a dual player guitar player. Right. You know, no, he hasn't been in a three guitar band. Uh, a lot of people haven't been in a three guitar band, so it would be an adjustment for anybody to walk in. Like I said, it's more of an ensemble, an ensemble, and everybody has their parts, and you play at this part, and this is the part you play, and everything's worked out. So yeah, it would be an adjustment for anybody to step into this gig. You know, it's not a definitely not an easy thing to. Uh, to play tight and, and stay within yourself right. and listen to everybody. It, it takes a, a lot other skills than just playing. You got you, your your ears and your uh, your dynamic takes on a whole other set of things you weren't even ready for. So uh, yeah, uh, I, I have a feeling Joe's going to do great. Um, we're going to get a couple shows under our belt, and he'll you know, find out exactly what he's getting himself into once we do a show. But. Uh, Okay. That's cool. That, that makes you guys even stronger, which is which is amazing. It was already a strong band. Absolutely, he's got a great melodic sense, you know, and he's a he's a great melodic player, and he can shred at the same time. So both right. both elements that would take to be in a band like this, you know. Now, how about a? How about any any new material? Is there any is there any uh, plans for a new Leather Wolf album coming up at any time in the future? Yeah, we won't be working on riffs. You know, it's really hard to, uh, to to get sometimes get things moving with everybody's busy schedules. But we're we're constantly just trying to work out riffs, and we you know got to make it really good before we ever put out something. So we're not just gonna throw something out there to say we did. Right. We'll be the first to tell you when we have something that we're proud of to release. We're working on some stuff. We're trying to get something finished. We hold ourselves to a pretty high standards, though. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, any any of the bands that are, you know, like you guys, it's, you know, professionalism, you know, and the quality of the product is always the, the main thing. So you like a lot of the night? Oh, Absolutely. Yeah, well, I'm at a show and uh, that Chris. Is anybody home right now? Yeah. Thank you, Matthew. Yes. Yeah, just want to talk about it. I'll be right back, John. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, you know that. Did you see that video we just released, the Kill and Kill deal? I did. That's cool. I've I, I watched it a couple times already. Actually, Chris sent it to me. And uh, I think he sent it. He sent it actually after you guys put it out, so I saw it. Yeah, so 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 um, that was an idea Pat had a uh, bass player, like you know, in October. Okay. So me and my friend Mike, um, we said, you know, fuck it, let's just let's let's call Chris. Uh, we do like Chris Sang Tanger Sangarini. Yeah, yeah. You know who he is? I do, I do. And we gave, and we we gave him a song, and he mixed Kill and Kill, and it just was killer. We were like, fucking a, dude, that smokes. Okay. So uh, we mixed it, and. Um, He's mixing five songs for us right now. Nice. Uh, um, we're, we're, we got like The Calling and Frickin' Spider and uh, Kill and Kill, Alone in the Night, and uh, what's the other one? Princess of Love. We're doing oh, Princess nice. of Love. Nice. Uh, and um, he's mixing all that stuff right now, and we're going to put out like a DVD LP in a little while, you know, with those songs on it, because we never really did much with those songs. And we're gonna we're re-recording the Grail off World Asylum uh, with Joey Joey and uh, Bobby playing, and we're gonna if, if it comes out really good, we're gonna uh, make a make a video of that one, you know. And uh, that's cool. But what's cool is that we got the, we got a chance to work with you know Chris, and he's like fucking the man, you know. Right, right. He made that song sound so killer. He did that, it, and the video is cool. I'm I'm glad that you guys, you know, are putting that stuff out again, you know, because it's a one thing I was going to bring up is I don't know if you guys see it out there, but it, it seems like the you know the the younger kids are starting to get involved in the music again. They're starting to get you know back into uh, you know bands that can actually play instruments and, uh, and 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 do the things that you know that you guys do, and 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 it's amazing to see it. So bringing that stuff back out, it's it's starting to hit again. Well, cool, man. I mean, it's we just love what we wrote, you know. 
Right. It's just part of it. It's a piece of us. So we just, it's cool that all these years later that we can go play a show and re- get it videotaped and get it recorded, and then, you know, it's cool. That's just really cool. Yeah, I mean, for you know, after all those years, and then and then bringing it back out and having a chance to uh, you know to rework it and, and get to that, you know, the the newer audiences, like I said, the younger the younger people. I've been noticing it here. The shows I go to, you know, I look in the crowd. I'm thinking, man, they, there's kids in there, you know, 14, 15 years old, and and they got they got albums and CDs, you know, at the end of the show that the guys are signing for them. And uh, I saw Twisted Sister in 2012, and there was a kid there that was. I think he was 11, and he was uh, in line, and we met at, you know, A.J. Perro, we were talking to him, and it's, it was really cool to see the kids, you know, knowledge of the songs, and, you know, even stuff that's, you know, that was, you know, from 83, 82, 83, and, and to see those kids getting back into it. Twisted Sister? We played with Twisted Sister last year at Bang Your, uh, Bang Your Head. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I was just so surprised at how popular those guys are out there. Oh, what's his name was playing drums? Um, the guy from uh, Dream Theater? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Portnoy, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mike Portnoy. Yeah, it's a... Uh, well, over in Europe, it seems like everything is, uh, you know, so much bigger. I mean, I, I'm hoping that the United States is going to start waking up pretty soon. It seems like we're we're starting to trend that way. Hopefully. It would be nice, but this is, you know, Europe is Europe, you know? Right, right. Yeah, and the festivals, I mean, we don't, the only thing that we really have over here is like M3. I mean, there's there's Rocklahoma, but just nothing that's, you know, that's uh, that's major like that. I don't know if it's the venues we don't have or, or what it is, but. Yeah, but, um, I don't know what that is. Why don't, why don't we do that? I don't know. You have to get a hold of Trump and make that happen. That's yeah, it. It'll <laughs> <laughs> we'll make, we'll make people way nicer and sweeter. Trump, we got to make metal, 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 metal great again. Metal, metal great again. That's it. <laughs> you know, he actually should have been his campaign, shirt, man. Right? <laughs> make metal great again. Hey, let's let's we, should put that, we should put that on the Facebook. That's the name of Trump. Trump. We're going to get a no, call. Let's get a call. picture. That's it. That's it. Well, put him in one of the videos. That's all. Make metal again. That's a good one. Imagine how. Yeah. You're being cut down. <laughs> now you guys are bringing those. You guys are bringing the uh, Alone in a Night video out. What is there going to be? Uh, you're going to do an announcement for it when it's a. You know when it plans on being released. Okay. And and doing doing a an LP, you know, like an EP with it. And we're just still talking about it. We're just we're gonna look at it and edit it. Just make your mind up when we have everything in our hands and see what we want to do. Okay. That's good. It'll definitely be out there, dude. One way or another, you know, I've always liked that song. Yeah, we've got some great footage from the Bang Your Head Festival doing that song live too. So we're what we want to do with it, and uh, we got some options. Don't really know. We like to think about things for three years before we actually pull the trigger. But I mean, three years. <laughs> <laughs> we, you know, we did Princess of Love, you know, and we never used to freaking play that song, you know? Right. So, yeah, and it, it actually goes over pretty good. Yeah. The Princess of Love. Actually working out. How, how how's the uh, how how are the is the uh, how are the fans responding to it? You know, to when you guys go out, you know, out in Europe and uh, and do some of the shows and everything, you getting a pretty good response. Yeah, I mean, I I know I'd love to see you guys. So, it, it all, it all, it, in other words, it goes really well. Well, that's good. That's good if you're getting the response that you <laughs> that you want out there. That's good. Yeah. Hold, on, hold on one second, John. Okay, go ahead, guys. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'm in Pittsburgh. It is 9.57. Three-hour time difference. Three-hour time you know difference. I think, Pat, I think the bass player is in Pennsylvania right now. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Hey, you guys are you guys are all over the place, huh? You get two in California. Well, no. He lives out here, but it's his, he grew up in Pennsylvania. I think he's visiting his parents right now who live in Pennsylvania. Oh, that's cool. That's always cool to know where everybody's from. Now, hey, you guys, you guys, uh, you know, you're talking about plans on on doing some uh, U.S. shows. Is there any plans like coming out east this way? Plans or hopes? Hopes. Well, yeah, we, we, we for the phone call. That's what it is, dude. If those we get the phone call that someone wants us to to pay us to come out and play, and we can afford to do it, then we show up. Right. Just, well, we, we we were in Pennsylvania, which is Pat's hometown. Did you were you there when we played? I didn't. I didn't get to go to the show. Three or four years ago. Yep. Yep. My brother went to the show, but I was working that night. Oh really? Yep. Yeah, because I remember it, you know he was telling me that you guys were coming in, and then I was. I just couldn't get out of it, so I was like, "Oh man!" That's why I was hoping that you know that you guys would get another, get another tour going and come back out this way. Especially Pittsburgh. I mean, we don't. I wish these guys would promote a little bit more and and, and start bringing the bands in, but it's uh, you know, it's it's few and far between. They'll only bring in you know the big acts. I mean, we had Bon Jovi here a couple nights ago, and that that was a total flop from what I hear. Yeah, he had to. He was sick, and he played. He was supposed to play, you know, a two-hour show or whatever, and ended up playing an hour. He had uh, he had one of the local guys come up and sing a song, and all the fans were were pretty upset about it. I had a lot of friends that went. I had a chance to go with a free ticket, and I didn't even go because it just wasn't even. Now, if it was you guys, that's a different story. Yeah, just thinking about like some of the stuff. But I mean, if you guys, you know, have a, have a chance to come out this way, I mean, it would be great to see you out here. It definitely would. We'd love to do it. It's just so far the cards have not fallen our way. That seems to be the. We're looking for it. We're searching the deck. Yeah, we're hoping to go to South America later this year too. Oh, that's cool. Getting getting the word out there too, South America and uh, yeah, and Europe. Getting you guys yeah. out there is always good. How about uh, how about like um, and like any last words that you guys want to get out there? Anything that you that you have going that's coming up? I know you you know, talked about the you know the DVD you know possibility and and the shows over you know overseas the festivals or anything. Is there anything else going on? I'm gonna change my shorts. <laughs> He saved the guy's life. Remember that. That's right, man. <laughs> that was too funny, man. It was just too funny. You know, he was. He had no concern. And even even when I slam back, bring the guy back in, though, that's what life guard says. He goes, dude, if he gets past that reef, he's gone. Yeah, yeah. You, 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 have, you have to figure back in this place. In this place, there's a there's a shallow. You walk out super shallow to your like waist, and then a hundred yards out there, you go from that to the abyss. Yeah, and then from you swim about a hundred yards past that, then you're onto the sandbar where you can actually stand it to your weight. Wow! And there's a plane, there's a little small Cessna plane out there. And it's that was bad. that was different at different places. It's, it's kind of a different place, but it's the same. No, that place. was on the Hyper Keys. No, that was like close to it. You could swim. Uh, yeah, you could. I tried to swim it one day when you guys were tracking. I well, that, that must be idea. a different. That must be a different one. I thought it was a good <laughs> idea one day to go by myself yeah. and I'm like swimming out there. I got my snorkel on. I'm like, God, this is so cool. All of a sudden, like. Clouds came over. Right. And like all of a sudden, visibility turned from 50 feet to like five feet, and then all of a sudden, I hear the sound, and it goes, doo, doo. 
Hey, have you guys ever gone back down there to uh, to see that to see that guy that you rescued, and that and that group of people? You know, I actually went there when we, last year we did the uh, the Monsters for Rock cruise and we stopped in the Bahamas. And uh, me and my wife rented a jeep and we drove to the other side of the island. We went back to the studio and somebody had just bought the studio. Yeah. And I walked in there and they go, "Excuse me, can I help you?" And I'm like, "Oh, I, I recorded back here like way back in the day." And they were like, "What?" They were like so freaked out. They set up this camera and. Like, they filmed me doing this documentary of talking about the heyday of the studio and all the magic that Compass Point Studio used to have. Yeah, yeah. So I went back, and I drove, I drove back into the village where this, this little kid, Trevor, he was probably like six years old, and he was a killer basketball player barefooted on gravel, right? You know, <laughs> I, I thought by now he's like in the NBA, <laughs> that one guy that he discovered. Probably. And all the villages are gone. It was like all developed into a thing now. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, man. It'd have been nice to get our two-inch tape while you were there. Yeah. <laughs> Both there. Both, yeah. Hey, that's still a great but, uh, story, though, man. That's a great story. Engineer guy said, yeah. what's his name? I don't know. I mean, I got a quarter-inch tape of something. I did you? Of what? Cry out? Have you ever seen that video, Mike? The crowd video? Yeah, I got it. You have it? Oh, great. <laughs> so we were in the office. I got it. Oh, my God. We're all, we're all singing cry out, and we're all tan as fuck. And we're all wearing these really super short shorts. Short, short. Yeah. It's just like this. There's something wrong with this picture. Are they still like dolphin shorts? I'm not really sure what he's going to do with those. You take a shower? What you... I just like, I mean, I'm thinking about, why would they want to do that video? That's you know it. I mean? Even if it was heavy metal, and you're in your, all your metal gear, and you're singing that song, it's just, it just doesn't fit. <laughs> It is classic. Oh, man. <laughs> I love the song, but I'm just like... Right. But it's, it's, it's a tricky one to make a video out of. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, man. Yeah, I got all this video on my computer, and I was watching it, just like, holy shit. We weren't real big uh, fans of thinking things through. No. That age of. <laughs> we, just, <laughs> we just did what we wanted to do. Hey, I got an idea. Why hey. don't we call both of our first album Motherwolf? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, let's, let's, let's call... You know, let's call Sex like, Motherwolf. That should probably clear things Yeah, that'll clear it up. <laughs> <laughs> was, that, was that you guys who made the decision, or was that the labels that did it? It was us. Yeah. We just didn't think it through. We made decisions by not making decisions, John. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously, like, we didn't think about it, because I think at the time... We figured, well, nobody knows who th- what this first record. We just figured it was like a demo. Right. Well, well did we know, like, now that would be, when you go to Germany, that's all they want to hear, right? They just want you to play that first record. Right. So, three, right? Yeah, so they're, they're like, oh, that is, that's the first record. So why did you call the second record the first record? They're like, yeah, they're like so confused. Yeah. Hey, you know what? That's a good answer. You guys kept people on their toes. That's what you were looking to do. Keep them thinking, man. Keep them thinking. You know what? What's too? <laughs> we just forgot. Forgot that we forgot the first record was Leatherwolf. That's it. Did you ever see happen to anybody? You ever seen the Dewey Cox story? Walk hard. Anybody see that movie? Uh-huh. No, no, no. No. Dewey no. Cox story. Uh, John C. Riley. It's a spoof on, um, you know, a uh, spoof on the Walk the Line, Johnny Cash story. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. It's the greatest movie ever. You have to watch it. What's it called? It's better than Spinal Taps. It's called The Dewey Cox Story, Walk Hard. He goes through all the different stages of his, his career, you know. And then, like, there's this one where he's in his heroin stage, and, and his wife's sitting on top of him, and she's like, Dewey! She's like, right. And she's like, Dewey! Dewey, come on! He's like, he takes off his glasses, and he goes, oh, I forgot you're even there. <laughs> That's what basically our career is like. <laughs> You guys, I think you guys, you guys did good with the first two two albums. I think even even if they're both called the same, you know. Okay, hey, n- nobody else has ever done it. Well, we're actually 
actually thinking about calling the next one just Leatherwolf. Yeah, Leatherwolf. Yeah, hey. Why not? Yeah, keep it. You got. You were the first to do the three guitars. They, they, they identify them by colors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> by the color of the record. Leatherwolf red, Leatherwolf black. That's it. That's it. How about any any uh, any last words for you guys? Is there anything else you want to get out to the to the fans? Hey, yeah, man. Um, check out our new uh, Wolfman video that we just put out. It's a uh, it's a live video uh, from us at the Keep It True Festival a uh, year and a half or so back in Germany, and we uh, we had a lot of contact from the music. The, the movie company that wanted us to <laughs> I'm not going to bullshit you, I'm sorry <laughs> they, they let us use the video they, they, we, they, they didn't sue us <laughs> we didn't get us to copyright it they said it was okay uh, Steve, uh, we're going to use it yeah. to tell us not to yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they basically bowed they basically we bowed we took some really cool footage of the Wolfman movie which, yeah. which if you think about the song Kill and Kill Again there's no other footage on the planet that would work with that song. We took it upon ourselves to You're let right. them know that, but we thought the song would be best for their movie. That's what we do, Jay. And, and, you know, we, we got the thing, you know, it, 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 is, it is, and it never was Kill Em, Kill Again. Because we were looking for that clip, we just couldn't find it. Right. Back when we first wrote the song, everybody, everybody thought the song was called Kill Em, Kill Again. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, yeah. Only because the professor would cock block me from Marianne. Yeah, that's it. That's the truth. That video that you guys just did though definitely is, is is pretty cool and I'll I'll uh I'll share it out there and get it out to the to the people and if anybody hasn't seen it you know uh well, thanks a lot man I'll definitely push you guys like I said I love the band been a fan for a long time um I really appreciate you guys taking the time to chat with me and it's pretty cool my pleasure man thanks thank for you dude. on your show and when, when I get the the, the the alone of the night thing done I'll send it to you buddy absolutely absolutely you guys if you guys get on my on my facebook page it's rockin the fast lane uh dot com is the website you know we're adding a, a lot of new content a lot of interviews what we're trying to do is, is is get the uh you know the the vintage bands and the bands that are still out there and just trying to grow this thing again to help you guys get out there to promote because we love the music we're always going to be fans and 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 i personally appreciate everything that you guys have done you know i mean how old are you 47 okay cool hey. yeah we've been what you're gonna say I'm, I'm like 21 dude yeah <laughs> <laughs> you don't sound 47 man i you're wish i fuck too. i wish i still was man i wish i still was in my 20s i should have just i should have just i should have just put jack on the air jack russell just called me i should have put him on the air with you you know what we got an interview coming up with jack in uh two weeks yeah, so you got it, you got it. Yeah, like I said, we'll we'll, we'll spread the word for you guys and, and, and keep on doing what you're doing, man, because we love it. We're always going to be there for you. We're always going to support, um, you know, it's it, it's appreciated. It really is appreciated. Well, thank you very much. All right, John, man, thanks a lot for your time, man. 
All right, guys. Thank you. Have a good night, man. Nice talking to you. Take it easy, buddy. See you around. You too. We'll see you. Bye. Bye-bye.